For hundreds of years, they worked these scenes in the southern Appalachians, all up and down these mountains. They worked scenes from six foot all the way up to eight foot, and all the way down to 17 inches. What a way to make a living. He was either no joke used to go around in this blue gym, especially around Barberville, Kentucky. If you went in with your shovel upside down, you'd have to go back outside to turn it over. And that's hard to believe. And here they used to just dig it all by hand. Just pick it out of the seam as they went. Just dig it out. In the early days when they first started mining, just do it the hard way. And then they would hand load it. They like block coal off a well because people burn it for heat. They'd hand load it. And then they would uh, have a mule or a horse. They would pull it outside on cars out to the temple where they'd dump it and they'd come back and get another load. In some of the places they just had ponies. The top was so low they used ponies. These old mules, they worked them hard. They kept a lot of them underground and they'd bring them out once a week so they wouldn't go blind. coal got too low and the seam they was working, they would use goats. I've even, even heard of them using dogs. And then when it got really too low, some places they just done it by hand. Just loaded a car, drug it in front of them, pushed it. That's hard to believe. Now before they had the child labor laws, they'd have young boys working the mines all the time. And you come from a poor family, that's all you had. These young boys here, probably in 12, 13, 14 years old. They have got them down to 10 years old, eight years old I've even heard. Here they would start out the real youngest ones working slate. They would pick slate and coal out of the uh, or rock out of the coal chutes as it's coming and slid it down. And you see the old taskmaster here, boys would lollygag or fool around a little bit. He'd take that little stick there and slap them on the hands, keep them working. They work all day long picking slate out of the coal. boys day in and day out just picking slate and rock out of the coal chutes. Some as early as 10 years old. And as they got stronger, more developed, and their backs got stronger, they, they start putting them in more jobs in the mines. Some of them would attend to the mules and horses and ponies and pull them in and out and take care of them. Some of them when they got hurt or lost a limb or got in an accident, they put them just standing around open doors, ventilation doors for the mules to haul coal back through. Sad. Notice the guy's got a peg leg on one side and the other one's got nothing on the other side. And here this just has to be just a picture of a young boy. He can't be six or seven years old at the most. Now 
Now back in the mines, they started getting a little more technology in the mines, electricity. Here is a DC cutting machine and it undercuts the coal. So when they shoot it, they don't have to shoot on solid. It takes less powder that way. And they cut up under the seam from against the bottom and it makes it loose and easier to shoot. Don't make as much smoke and powder to take the shoot. Then the drillers would come in and drill a hole patterns around to set their dynamite charges in. Used to, they used black powder and then they went to dynamite to uh, shoot the coal. Old breast dogger. Here's a shot fire, they call him. Would come in and set the charges in the holes that they drilled, and he would set them off. Out he hollered, fire in the hole three times. Fire in the hole, fire in the hole, fire in the hole. Then after all the smoke cleared and everything, they'd back them cars back in there and start hand-loading them cars again. technology went on up, they started getting, instead of hand loading, they had a, a loader, and it would just go push the coal up and it was shot out, and it would load it into a conveyor chain in the back, and it'd load a car behind itself. This come in in probably the 30s, and then they went from the mules, pulling these old carts out, when they got electricity, motors they called them, electrical motors. They would hook to these cars instead of a mule or a horse and they would pull them outside. They could pull more too and faster. They'd haul them out to the temple and dump them in the, the bin, ore bin, and they'd separate the rock out of the coal. Here they got a little more modern they began to wash the coal to separate the big from the small. Now as they advanced in the mines, as they was mining, they used timbers. They timbered anywhere they could or set cribs. These old guys would come to work every day. Some days they didn't even need, they had so much coal on the ground and nobody was buying none. There was no work, they didn't need no coal. So, what's a guy to do when he's got a, a house full of hungry kids? So that's the way it was back then. Go to work every day and you didn't have a set eight hour shift. You usually got paid by the ton you loaded. You didn't load no coal, you didn't get no pay. And you'd walk home every day to your family. You'd do it the next day, and the next day, and the next day. And his family usually lived in mining camps like this. A lot of people growed up in these. Hard way of life. Now in the bigger mines, they had better mining camps. Of course, this was a brand new one. And you can see here on the hill closest to you in the picture, that's usually the, uh, the foreman and the executives of the mine. But most people lived in a mine. Here, every place had a mining store, a mine store, company store they called it, where everybody traded. And here's a copy of an old receipt for a guy where he worked. The time they deducted his powder out of it or whatever they charged back then, usually you had to pay for your own powder. They didn't furnish it. Here's what they paid the miners in mostly around the mining camps. 
grill. And it was only good at the company store. So this is what they worked for. And he usually paid the company store prices. So you got a big family, you can get in debt real quick with the company store. So it got to where a lot of places men were just working to pay off their debt at the store to feed their family. And you can see how the mining family growed up. House full of kids. What else are you to do but go to work every day? I take in mind there wasn't no food stamps back then or no social programs. You either got out and work or you done without. Now the men, their main issue in the mines was safety. There's always roof falls or smoke or flooding or real falls or something. That was their biggest concern was safety. But their worst nightmare was a mine explosion. You could be a half a mile away in another part of the mines and a mine explosion. And when that mine explodes, it picks up all the loose coal dust in the air and ignites it. And this is what it looks like. And the concussion usually knocks out all the bradishes, all the ventilation stopping, so the ventilation's not going like it used to, it's short circuited. And here's something that mess up. They do experiments with gases and stuff. This is what it looks like when it explodes in a drip map. I've heard rumors that it shot equipment half a mile across the holler when it blows up. It's like a shotgun shell. And this smoke, this is what this is what gets most people if they survive the blast. It's the smoke. There's no oxygen. Just smoke. And a lot of men could seal their cell off, but they run out of oxygen. Here, this next one, this is a sad story of the Praterville mine explosion of a guy writing his family goodbye. Now this happened in 1902 back behind uh, Lake City where they call it Rocky Top now. And there was 184 died. Probably half of them just smothered to death. And what was devastating, most families all worked together in the mines. Fathers, sons, brothers, uncles, cousins, all kin. So when something like this happened in the mines, it devastated the families. Well, the men, they had had enough of this being treated like nothing and not having no say. So they decided they was going to start a union or get with the union as being formed. Just for their safety's sake. I hear John L. Lewis started the union. It was a hard fight, but a lot of places didn't want a union. And you can see here the old guards and thugs and stuff trying to keep the union from unionizing, but they finally got it. And here the company started making safety rules. Here's an old early wage agreement. Here's the wages they made back in 1934. It don't seem like much, but back then that was big money. Especially around the Depression. Now from 1900 to 2020 up to date, there have been over 123,000 miners killed. Now today, modern miners, they use roof boats instead of timbers. 
And here's a continuous miner. This miner can mine coal more in one minute than a miner could load by hand all day long. So thank you all for watching and hope you enjoyed.